Morning guys, I hope you all got your coffee in hand. We've got our coffee, we headed out early this morning as you can see the beautiful sunrise behind us. We followed up again on line audio, not too far from the camp. Um, we managed to find one of them very young males. He's busy contact calling at the moment, so we're trying to relocate on the rest of the pride. But I could think of worse things to be doing in the morning. Um, we left that young male from the Mbiri Pride close to the lodge. We picked up tracks for the rest of the Pride. We followed them for quite a long way, but they seem to have moved north um, towards the Timavati. So we're going to leave them and we're going to head south. Guys, look what's going to pop out of this termite mound here. Little dwarf mongoose. You'll just see one of them here, but they do live in families. Normally, somewhere between sort of six and ten of them in what's called a business. That's what you call a group of mongoose, a business of mongoose. They do actually take refuge and sleep down in these termite mounds or empty logs. They run down there for safety. They feed on a large variety of things from insects to lizards, eggs, the odd snake. They will attack snakes as a group together. It's not their main diet, but they will eat that. It's Africa's smallest carnivore. So what I want you guys to do is try and tell me why even a panda bear, which eats bamboo, is a carnivore. So what makes a carnivore a carnivore? can see his sharp claws, his little teeth sticking out. Very cute animals. So we came into this area this morning, Marilla Ridge. We often get a herd of buffalo. Yeah, you can see buffalo dung, it's pretty fresh. Looks like they were here throughout the evening. It's looks like a big herd, maybe 100, 200 buffalo, judging by the tracks. So after about a 20 minute search we managed to find these buffalo, it's probably about 120 of them all together here, typical buffalo fashion coming to investigate us.
I always say there's nothing more African or better than the bush than to spend time with a large herd of buffalo. They're incredibly social animals, so live in large numbers. It's a mixed herd, the breeding herd. So you'll have a lot of females with their youngsters, and then you'll have bulls within the herd fighting for dominance. Here's a great example on the left. Look at a female buffalo. On the right you have a male. He's got what's called a massive boss on top of his horns there, which they use when they fight with other males for dominance, you can see the females don't need it as much. So she doesn't have that on top of her head. The herd itself is often led by what are called pathfinders. So even though the bulls do all the protecting and all the dominance for fighting, the herd is often led by a group of females that are called pathfinders. And they'll determine where the herd goes to graze, where they go to drink. This herd's just woken up. They've all been sleeping in a tight circle. They do that so they can stay safe from lions. If a group of lions approaches, they're all tightly bunched, they're all together, ready to face. The males will often come to the outskirts of the herd and try and protect them against the lions. So these buffalo will now move off grazing and probably eventually get to one of the water sources in the area. They're very dependent on water. They eat a lot of tall, coarse grass, so water is very important for digestion. But uh, what a great find, guys. That's our Magnificent Seven. Busy following up on monkeys alarm calling. They're alarm calling in these trees to the left of us um, along a drainage line, yeah? So we came to investigate and there's this big pool of water here and look who's here, this big male hippo. Why would you say he's by himself here, Alistair? He's actually a terrapin, wait, sorry. Look at the terrapin crawling up. So they'll do two things, those terrapins. They'll either just use him as a like a rock that they can sun themselves on, or if maybe the hippos or other animals come into the pool, have any ticks on them, you'll feed off the ticks. And yeah, I think he's by himself. It's very close to Main Dam, so probably been pushed out by a bigger rival male and he's uh, had to come and line the bachelor's pond here yeah. while the other guy enjoys the good real estate and the ladies. The retirement village. Yeah. You'll see over here this little herd of elephants are eating the round leaf teak. It's one of the nice examples that why we do not have big round leaf teaks around because these guys love to eat them and absolutely demolish them. So it's a really nice example of it. No, they don't actually eat most of the leaves. You'll see she puts it in her mouth and it's taking the nutrient layer, the bark off that branch, getting to the nutrient layer and then she'll usually just drop it on the ground. So they don't actually eat most of the plant. They just, just like that, they just drop the rest. You see how she's using her foot to break the lower part of the branches or tree. You often see elephants kicking the ground or pushing the trees or branches with their feet to help them break. It's cool that it's just coming out the other end without the bark on. Like a little conveyor belt. She's using her tongue and then using her teeth as well to strip it off. Thank you everyone for joining us again. I hope you enjoyed that. That lion roar was quite amazing and also great to catch up with those buffalo. We hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.
Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm